na mara ya mwisho hata kitoka aliniacha hapa akisema kwamba wanaenda kufanya mkutano kule eh, Nairobi ngo Pia that there was an attempt people came to his house and they stoned Lakini mimi nilipangia yeye vitu bunduki pengine inakuaga alikuwa anaweka kwa gari At the time that Father Kaiser died, he had a depressive illness. I didn't know when he came out of the room, and uh, I didn't see him again until I got the news. He was a fierce critic of the Kanu regime, a former military man turned priest. This is the story of Father John Anthony Kaiser, shot and killed 15 years ago. Did the Kenyan government have a hand in his killing? Did the American government give up its own citizen? Tonight on Case Files, Kaiser, If I Die, starts now. On the Morendant Junction along the Nakuru Naivasha Highway stands a cross on the edge of the road. This is the place where an outspoken Catholic cleric was found dead 15 years ago. Mystery surrounds the circumstances behind his death, a mystery that has troubled those he worked for as a parish priest and the more than 15 million Catholic population across the country. On the morning of the 23rd of August 2000, the body of the 78-year-old former paratrooper was discovered by a butcher. Father John Anthony Kaiser had a deep gunshot wound to the back of his head. His pickup truck appears to have been driven into a ditch on the busy Nakuru Naivasha Highway. Tuakuta makari karibu tatu hivu. Moja ilikuwa imeingia kwa mtaro na idabol kebo ya waiti. Tukadania ni accident imetendeka. Tukajaribu kusumama na hii lori yetu ya posta. Hey! Kupe mwaja hile walikuwa mesimama ilikuwa ya polisi. Wakati ya wakati wabia musisi mame, musisi mame, endeni, nidini, nidini, rakaraka. The pickup appears to have rammed into an object or one had rammed into it before it came to a stop. Inside the pickup, broken glasses from the driver's window. There was no occupant on board. There were no signs that the man of the cloth had been thrown out of his vehicle as a result of a road accident. Hata wakati wanyesi ya karingiri ilikuwa mepikuwa disasi. Hey, tuka wakoma na tuka endelea na tuka endelea na tuka endelea na safari. Nyuma ndiyo tuka sikia kwa mba kumbe ilikuwa ni ya Fata, Fata Kaisa. Ndiyo alikuwa mebigwa ni sasi yamu. From the look of things, the Catholic priest appears to have been murdered elsewhere and his body ferry to the scene. His sudden death thrust his name and character to the national stage once again. The only way in which these fears can be allayed is a thorough investigation, uh, arrest, prosecution and punishment of offenders, immediate publication of the accumulated report and punishing all those who are responsible for ethnic violence. It can't be where we are drogas. Why the Kaiser is not walking around with a lot of money. There has been a spate of instances of intimidation, threats and harassment of human rights defendants. They are a political matter, but it's turned out to be a great matter in this country by standing up and taking right. the the Kanu government at the time had announced that there were strong indications that the outspoken man of the cloth might have committed suicide. Why will a Catholic priest take his own life? What is it that made the priest travel for more than 200 kilometers only to end his life in the middle of nowhere? John Anthony Kaiser was born an American citizen in Minnesota in the United States of America. Kaiser will later join the army in 1954. Kaiser had a liking for the English language. In 1964, as Kenya assumed self-rule, Kaiser arrived in the country for missionary work for the Catholic Church. This is a story of a Catholic priest, a powerful cabinet minister, and a troubled church congregation. Little was known about Father John Anthony Kaiser. 
but his last days are traced to the Rift Valley. In the quiet town of Kiligoris is a Catholic church, Logorian Parish. A towering seat bought by Father John Anthony Kaiser dwarfs the rest of the seats here. It was in Logorian where Father Kaiser spent most of his time. In fact, it was here where he met what those who know him say were silent enemies, enemies who later pulled the trigger that ended his life. Yeah, alikuwa ni father ambaye alipenda kusaidia watu. Alikuwa na jali sana welfare of Africa. In fact, he used to cry about that. Father Kaiser spent most of his time at the Logorian parish and was around when the region witnessed the 1992 and 1997 tribal clashes. If Christians could approach him in any church activity. He wanted what people have said, and that is it. The church premises that also houses a school became a temporary shelter for residents of Kilgori's town, fleeing tribal clashes. The soft-spoken Catholic priest did not only love his congregation, but at times, waded into the conflicts pitting the local political class and the residents of Kiligoris. The residents here described him as a fearless father. Things seem to be running well for the aging Catholic priest until the morning of the 27th of August 2000. The priest told his housemaid he was planning to travel. <laughs> Kawaida akitoka alikuwa na bag kidogo tu yanafikiri ya vitabu na vitu vyake vya misa ndiye aliweka kwa gari sababu nilikuwepo akaniaga vizuri akiondoka jioni hiyo alikuwa na bunduki no sikuona hiyo the catholic priest had been summoned by the nuncio Pope's representative in Nairobi. The housemaid says she packed a few things for the traveling priest. Romula Zocheng, who at the time helped the man of the cloth in the Catholic mission, told case files Father Kaiser was traveling to Nairobi with one agenda in mind. Nairobi ngo, ikiwa niyo shuguli ya kutetea haki za watu. Na alipotoka hapa pia kulikuwa na hiyo mambo ya fununu fununu kwamba hawaelewani na mbunge wa eneo hili. Father Kaiser owned a private farm and those who knew him say the priest loved hunting. The priest spent some time with his fellow priest in Gong before embarking on a journey to see the nuncio. Father Kaiser will let him back on a journey back to Kiligoris. Father Kaiser decided to use the Nakuru Naivasha Highway. But when on his way back to Kiligoris, the Catholic priest is said to have parked his pickup truck on the edge of the road, neatly arranged his personal belongings on a sheet before turning the gun on himself. Father Kaiser reportedly shot himself in the back of the head using his personal gun. Romuras told case first they had no idea that the priest, a man who struck an image of a father figure, had taken his life, not in Kligoris, but hundreds of kilometers away in Nairobi. So, baadae, akiwa huko ndiyo tukapata ripoti kuamba, eh, padruenu, hameaga. Lipata tu habari, oh, utaona father kaisa tena, hameuawa, hamepatikana akiwa naivasha. So I thought that he was killed in the house because prior that there was an attempt. Prior that there was an attempt, people came to his house and they stoned. Fortunately, the stone hit the frame of the window. Ata sing mimi mwenye siku juu ni ni kuamba muto amerusha jiwe ni asubuya ke tulikuta ni jiwe. Lakini wakati lili ni lifikiri pengi ni risasi. Imepiga kwa sababu hile mulio ilitoka na kishindo ilikuwa menistua sana. Ni kama alilenga, alikuwa menilenga hapa kwa sababu nilikuwa ni megemeza kichu. So siwezi kujua kama wenye kufanya hivyo, alijua ni padri, ndiyo yuko ndani, walitaka kumuwiza, ama alijua tu ni mimi, ama ni mutu mwingine. The Catholic Church and the American government were up in arms.
After several days, the body of Father John Anthony Kaiser was ferried back to Kiligori's town for burial. With his death came questions, questions that placed the Kenyan government on the spotlight. The American government wanted answers. The Catholic Church was breathing fire. Let me remind all those behind the murder of Father Pike that the blood of the innocent cries for vengeance of God. The Americans wanted their own team of investigators to take part in investigating the priest's murder. At the time, there was word that Father John Anthony Kaiser was a troubled man. In fact, in the initial police findings, the police claimed that Father Kaiser wept as he conducted what could be his last church sermon in Kiligoris. <laughs> Dr. Frank Jenga was among the first people the FBI agents paid a visit. I got a call uh, right here from a man I knew who died last week called Noah Arapto. Noah Arapto then was the chief of the CID. And he called me and said, uh, Dr. Aria, there's something I want you to talk to you about. A witness told the inquest that a day before the Catholic priest was found murdered, he had drummed his pickup truck into his house in Kiambu. The owner of the house told the court he came across Father Kaiser holding his gun, which he offered him, but he declined. Was the priest in Kiambu, or was this a plot to portray him as a man out to kill himself? Case files. Take a break. <laughs>